And greetings and welcome to the QCast. This is season four, episode 57, a special episode in that this is the season finale of season four. I figured what a, what a way to end a season by talking about the coming season. And I think the off season in the QCast is kind of like a few days or maybe a week at the most. So <laughs> There is no off season Q. There's no. no off season. No, there's no off season. And, uh, and folks, my guest today is the head men's basketball coach of the Illinois Wesleyan Titan men. That is Ron Rose. Ron, you know, I got to say that uh, the off season tends to go pretty quick, doesn't it? I know that, uh, is there an off season for you? We talked about the QCast, but it seemed like from the moment the ball stopped bouncing, I think you guys started recruiting right away and haven't stopped. So is there an off season for coaches? It is. This has been the busiest off season. There really isn't because you, you, as soon as the season's over, you've got all the wrap up of the season. Uh, you start recruiting never ends, and then you get ready for camps and and um, you do find you got to find a you got to find a week or two to recharge the battery, which I'm going to do next week. Uh, but otherwise, there's always things to do, and and uh, but it's a different pace. It's it, you're doing different things. It's one thing I've always loved about education is there's a beginning and an end but the beginning starts as me as soon as right. the end right. is over so but it's been a great off season um and really looking forward to it. we're only you know two three weeks away from guys getting back on campus it's exciting and obviously you know this is not folks this is not the season preview we'll do that like we usually do in october november so this is not the season preview we're not going to get into players and but but we should say just before we get going, we're talking about the the non conference schedule. This is a schedule reveal episode, and uh, you got to be excited. I mean, you you've you, you've got a lot of guys coming back from a fourteen and two CCIW team. So much talent. Um, I mean, fair to say, uh, as a fan, I'm excited. As the head coach, I'm sure you're excited about this group you're going to coach. Well, it's a group that has an immense amount of experience. You know, this this group, um, you know, we, we've lost some key guys every year, but we have a lot of guys that have logged, been playing for three or four years. And there, there's nothing like experience. There's nothing like being out there. And then we have um, really six seniors that are really geared up uh, to have a great senior year. So, yes, we're excited about the year. Uh, we're talking about the schedule. We, we've put a challenging schedule together like usual because we're expecting to have uh, a quality te team coming back and we need to be challenged. One thing we've been talking about offline is is just the, the change in the NCA selection system from the thing that's been in place a long time, got more of a five criteria committee based kind of like a committee subjectively weighing the weights of these five criterion to a thing called NPI, which is, which is just a, you know, a formula. It, it, from what I've learned about it, it's, it's not bad. I, I think, I think other sports have some bigger concerns. I think football, I'm not sold. I think for basketball, it seems like NPI is going to be a good thing. I'm just curious at this point, um, I know you're trying to figure out NPI because it impacts things like this, like your schedule. It impacts how you want to construct a schedule. Have no you doubt. had a chance to, have you had a chance to even think through it? I, it's really brand new. I know there's a data cast episode out there. Have you had a chance to think through how this thing impacts how you want to schedule? Well, shout out to Matt and Zach Snyder for breaking that down. I, I uh, got on the elliptical yesterday and started listening to it. And you know I can get my math nerd on. I was a math oh, major yeah. here. I was an actuary for a time. My dad was a math professor. And my dad taught me to do math. You had to do it pencil to paper. And I got about half half hour into it and thought, okay, I'm going to have to sit down. <laughs> uh, you, can't, you can't learn that stuff on the elliptical. So um, I, I, I appreciate those guys. That was an amazing job of breaking down and, and that's going to be one of my projects here in the next week or two to really gain a, a, a good understanding of it and can you strategically affect your scheduling to help your NPI and, and I don't know those answers right now uh, but I really look forward to digging into it and seeing if it will change how we schedule. We're always going to out schedule the best non-conference nine games that we're capable of 
regardless of what that says. I mean, we're right. going to try to play good people, but I do think based on preliminary, that's going to be, you're going to be rewarded for good schedules, maybe even more. Yeah. I, I don't, it seems like the summary is, is like coaches don't really need to dramatically change how they're looking at scheduling based on this. It's not like um, the early indications are that people like you that have been scheduling really tough should change that. Um, so we'll learn more. We'll learn more as we go. And boy, if you, if you were on that elliptical for the Snyders, that hour and 37 minutes, I got you burning like <laughs> 1900 calories, Coach Rose. That's, I'm not good enough shape to listen to the whole thing. We'll have to break <laughs> that down into like three or four workouts. <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, let's get, this is exciting. This is fun. We're, we're kind of uh, uh, combining a couple things here. We're going to, we're going to have Coach Rose talk about his non conference schedule. I think, uh, Katie, our wonderful lead in athletic communications, will take this and kind of embed the link in some of the things that go out from the school, which is cool. Um, so let's pull up. I've got now, you know, Coach Rose, a lot of the knock on the QCAS from the other D3 podcasts is that is that we don't have good production. We don't have any production. It's like there's no <laughs> visuals on the screen. So what I'd like to share with you, Coach Rose, check this out for a second. Look at this. I hit share screen. Now, are you seeing this wonderful slide? Are you Man, you're going high tech here, Q. This is another level. Yeah, this no, is another level. Right. When I take the shots from you know the data cast and in the other podcast, like the Q cast is producing nowadays, and I'd just like to make <laughs> that clear. Okay, so uh 2024, 25 non-conference schedule reveal, Coach Rose. Let's start with the first two games of the season that will be at the Jack Sigma Hall of Fame Invitational. This wonderful event is sponsored by our good friend, Dr. Bob Spear, class of 77. He goes by Sport Theory 101 <laughs> on Twitter or X, and he has become a major presence in the Twitter world in the last five years or so. First of all, before we get into the matchups, which are incredible, uh, talk a little bit about the tournament and about the support from, uh, from uh, alum Bob Spear. Yeah, Dr. Spears followers are going to go way up after this podcast, yeah, I have sure. a feeling. Um, first, Greg and Co-Gardner, um, uh, uh, Greg uh, Gardner was Jack Sigma's professor when he was here, and they had the idea initially three years ago to start this tournament in Jack Sigma's honor of making the Hall of Fame, and uh, they sponsored it here the first three years. And uh, uh, Dr. Spear, um, you know, our good friend, Titan legend. Uh, it's been so fun um, having uh, Bob be part of the program. And so he's taking on the sponsorship. And I can't think of a better person to do that. I mean, three-time first-team academic All-American. Uh, you know, I know you've talked to him. Super fun. Uh, conversation with his theories and talking sports and other things. So uh, he's been a great supporter. We love having him part of the program and very appreciative that he's been willing to carry on this sponsor sponsorship so we can continue to run the Jack Sigma Invitational, which has been, you know, one of the top Division three tournaments in the country. And that little photo I have off to the right, of course, is both of uh, the guys we're talking about is that you've got Jack there, number 44, and then Bob Spear, there he is, number 32, right behind him. I think that photo appears in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, which is how cool is that? But let's get to this tournament this year, Coach Rose, because I don't think it's possible that there's another four-team tournament in Division Three with this field. So the Illinois Wesleyan <laughs> Titans, of course, won the CCIW last year, 14 and two Cal Lutheran went 15 and one and won the SCIAC Wisconsin Platteville went 12 and two and won the WIAC and Calvin went 12 and two and was a co-winner of the MIAA. Um, th we don't need to break this down a ton just to say like, Holy cow, Ron, like what a group of four teams you've got coming to the Shirk Center. Yeah, before we talk about it, I do want to allude to Bob Spear going to the glass offensively in that picture. He was. He I, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention he he's not standing watching. He's going to the glass. And that is one of his theories that he espouses is that no you gotta, doubt. 
And I have seen video of him from the seventies of denying an inbound in, in inbounds. And I, <laughs> we now can see that he was going to the glass and uh, it's wonderful to see when people match what they say. No, he, he didn't just talk the talk. He walked the walk, no doubt. Um, but you, you're right. This, this field is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, we're always trying to, to get um, three nationally uh, recognized teams in the tournament. And we want this thing to be uh, as competitive. We want it to be a NCAA caliber tournament the first weekend. And I think it, you know, it does for our guys. We know we've got to, we've got to be working in the off season. We better have be ready right. once practice starts. You've got these really challenging games right off the bat, and it gets your guys' attention. Um, you know, one thing that I'd say is when we schedule, um, you know, we're trying to get coaches, teams, programs that we respect that do it the right way, that work hard. And it, it brings out the best, uh, you know, in, in me, in our staff, in our team. You better you better dot your I's and cross your T's when you're starting the, the season like this. Um, the, the matchups are cool, right? So Cal Lutheran, um, you played them last year in a really tough game. I was there. I mean, a close game that came down to the final minute or so. They beat you. They go on, have this monster season. They make the tournament. Um, so you're going to face them on Friday night. Now, what's interesting is, and I want you to talk about this, is the Titans are playing the early game Friday, the 5 p.m. game against Cal Lutheran. Platteville and Calvin are playing the the late game. Uh, yeah. Can you explain, Ron, why that is that uh, that we're playing the early one? Well, you know, it, one of the fun things about Division Three, and I think you've had a significant impact as this, is the relationships that, that are built at our level and, and the friendships. And so Russell White has, in a very short time, has become a good friend. And, um, and so uh, similar to when Yeshiva came out, if Cal, Cal Lou's coming all the way out here, we want to play them. They want to play us if they're making the trip to Illinois Wesleyan. Right. They have a player on their team that is uh, an Orthodox Jewish player. And so um, um, we're, we're going to play the early game so that he can observe Sabbath. So uh, to allow him to to play on that Friday night, we're going to play the early game. That's uh, just wanted people to understand. They're probably looking at this like, why, why is Illinois Wesley not playing the, the, the late game? And there's your reason right there is uh, accommodating – uh, a player from Cal Lutheran, which is really cool. And then, uh, I mean, boy, if if you're around Bloomington, if you're in the Midwest, you might want to get over as well for <laughs> Platteville versus Calvin. I know that Calvin lost Jalen Overway to an ACL, which is awful. They've also got some talent coming in, and they've got everybody else back pretty much. Um, that Platteville-Calvin game, Ron, is kind of like watching a Final Four game. You know, just I would say the, the 5 p.m. game is as well. But that's those are two other big hitters there in the 7 p.m. game. Well, don't leave early. <laughs> right. Yeah. Stick around because you're right. It, 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 those two teams could find themselves in the Final Four. Uh, as, as could ourselves in Calu. I think you're Absolutely. talking you're talking four teams that – that. Uh, realistically should could be in the top 20 if not the top 10 preseason I think all four teams are going to have great years uh you're looking at uh, also coming out that weekend you're going to see some of the best small college basketball players in the country yep. uh, competing um you know Cal is going to play that physical style you know the other thing is and, and you know this we're in perilous times Q with the, the one last year of COVID uh part of this is a uh, I'm, I'm giving our best guess. We the rosters aren't out yet. Who's coming back? I know Calu has some guys that right. may might. I don't know that. Uh, you uh, Platteville obviously has some guys that are coming back. Uh, Logan Pearson, All American, yep. is coming back. Uh, Calvin, uh, 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 he's coming back. is coming back. So you're, you're talking. You're going to have some. Uh, really experienced, mature, talented teams going at it right away. And, and there's no surprises here. Like you're going to see great basketball from the tip. 
uh, on Saturday night, the the Sigma tournament's a, t- a pure tournament where the losers play the losers, the winners play the winners. The championship is at, at 7 p.m., the consolations before that. So whatever matchups we get both nights, they will be fantastic and they will be meaningful. All four of these teams, like you mentioned, are in the top 10, 15 radar easily. And um, these these will be important games in that NPI calculation in the first ever year of NPI. So what a way to kick off the season. Let's get to non-conference game three. There's nine of these, by the way, folks. There's nine non-conference games nowadays. And non, non-conference non game three, um, a WIAC school, right? Anytime you see UW before something. I saw Stout last year. You saw them at the Shirk Center. Um, they were very big and talented last year. Uh, now their stud player has moved up and on. I, I I can't remember where he went to, but I feel like Sindel. Brody's Brody's going to go to Brody Fox that, headed to Sindel. There you go. So he's going to D one. Um, I'm guessing what you encounter with the UW Stout is a typical WIAC team that's going to be big and have some kind of serious dudes out there. So what what how did the Stout game come about, and what are your thoughts on that one? Well, so usually I'll just give you the blueprint of how we typically do it. We we get two at the Sigma. We try to do an away tournament. Uh, previously, we went to Champions Classic in North Dakota, Great Lakes last year. We get two more there. We go somewhere for Christmas. There it gets you to six. Uh, we always uh, we play a couple uh, non-conference rivalry games we'll get to in a second, and it leaves you really one game right. to schedule. And lately what we've been doing is we've kind of been – uh, trying to get teams to come to the Sigma, then we'll return it somewhere else. Right. And so UW is stout. Uh, Coach Lake does a great job. Uh, he got a whole, he contacted me, a, you know, a couple of years ago, interested in the coming to the Sigma tournament. And so what we're going to do is actually, uh, because we did not play each other last year, we are going to return the game this year, and then they will come back the following year. Oh, cool. And so we'll end up uh, seeing UW Stout three years. They'll be in the our schedule the next two years. And you're right. You, you play a YAC school, it's going to be physical. They play really fast. Right. They get up and down the floor. And one of the goals always in scheduling is you really like it when you can play different styles uh, against teams that play different styles so that it prepares you when you get into conference play, it's not the first time you've had to have different conversations or prep for different strategies with your team. And UW Stout is, you know, is, is going to be big, physical, play fast. Um, so it'll be a, a really good test on the road. Very impressed, too, that you were able to pull out Brody Fox in the Citadel just like that. I mean, <laughs> folks, these coaches that tell you they're not checking in on stuff, you know, don't, don't listen to them. Because did you see how quickly that kid, that information came out right there? <laughs> uh, so that'll be a fun trip for the Titans up to uh, up to UW Stout. And by the way, a campus won't look like this picture uh, on December or whenever November 16th. It, it will look different than that. I got to say, you know, this is a very beautiful summer looking campus right there. It'll be a little chilly up there, Ron. Fair to say. They're not going out on the lake. There, there's no <laughs> doubt we won't, there's no we won't be taking a boat ride. Okay. This is a fun one. Uh, so, Webster, we're going to the Webster tournament. Uh, Coach Rose, do you know what a Gorlock is by chance? I've I've had a chance to ask <laughs> other people this on the queue. Do you know what a Gorlock is? Well, I, I'm looking at your your uh, graphic here. Is it some sort of a? I don't know what a Gorlock is. It's it, it is the combination of the intersection that the campus is on. I think it's streets called Gore and Lockwood. I believe is an intersection. So they created like a mythical character called the Gorlock. This appears to be what a Gorlock looks like, but um, this is a fun one. So what I thought was cool about this, and you'll have to tell me if there's intention here, is you have at least you have two really key returners from St. Louis in Nick Roper and Harrison Wilmson. You've had a pipeline of studs from St. Louis. You got Brady Keel on the roster. How cool is it? like the Wash U games at the Shirk Center this year. How cool is it that you get two games in the hometown of a few of your your players? Talk a little bit about how the Webster tournament came about. Well, and that is a goal. Uh, One one thing, uh, Chris Bunch is a good buddy of mine and and just a a great guy. 
And uh, we've this will be the third time we've played in this tournament. And St. Louis has been a great area for us to recruit. As you mentioned, we've we've had a pipeline of the yeah. St. Louis posse, as they call themselves. And, and certainly we have key guys on our roster this year from St. Louis. And it gives us a chance to take our program down to that area, make it a little easier for their families to see them play. As I mentioned earlier, we're always looking for um, a tournament early in the season that's uh, not at home. Uh, I love playing in the tournaments because it is, you know, uh, it simulates the NCAA tournament, right. simulates the conference tournament, you know, back-to-back -back days and preparation. Um, and then I have a lot of respect for Coach Bunch. And then getting to play Westminster, uh, I've been friends with Todd Creel for yeah. over 25 years. He's one of the really good guys in, in college basketball. So you get to play really quality teams, quality people in an area that's really important to us. In that tournament, I, I took my best guess. Um, I put on the side TBD and they were, I didn't know if we played Webster first or what, or Westminster. I just guessed. Do, do you happen to know who's, who we play first? Do we play second there? I, I do. I do not know that at this point, but we definitely play those two teams. Those are the opponents, right? Okay. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be fun. Uh, hey, also a real easy place for an out-of-towner to fly into, right? Flying to St. Louis, get to Webster. Um, that'd be fun if if I can, can make that uh, and see two more games. So you've got a great So term. this is not a commitment? I thought this was going to be an no, announcement right it, here. I'd like to do my commitments one at a time. I've committed <laughs> to playing in the, the Titan men's basketball golf outing, and I'm starting to put the band back together. We've got Bart com committed, Mosey's committed. We're Stein's out of town. So the dream team isn't quite intact, but there's other guys that can fill in for Stein. So I'm not. Well, I bet you have a long list of, of people calling you trying to get on that. I bet there's a wait list. There's a vetting process happening right now. <laughs> and so I'm not committing yet to the Gorlocks, but I hope to. I think that would be uh, on my wish list. Let's go to non conference game six. And this is one of those local rivalries that has been played almost every year for. I don't know, 25 years. I feel like there was one season in the last 20, 25 years that we didn't play this for some reason, but the Chicago game has become just a staple of your schedule. Talk about the matchup with the, with the Maroons. Well, it's in my time, 19 years, we played them every single year. Right. And so it was, it was a kind of a rivalry, a, a, a non-conference game that they had done before I got here. I'm good friends with coach McGrath, who really is a, uh, a leader within our Division Three yes. basketball did a really good job of advocating for uh, Division Three basketball, and and so uh, does a tremendous job. You know, we like to play also really good uh, academic schools, and being two hours north, it's a natural thing. We we recruit a lot of guys from the Chicagoland area, and uh, you know you, you're playing a UAA opponent, and every year we've had great competitive games with Chicago. And so uh, they should be outstanding this year. I, you know, thank goodness uh, Bryce Hopkins won't be around, but they have uh, a stable of talent coming back. Uh, really impressed with a couple of their freshman players last year. So I think they're going to be tremendous this coming season. They will be tremendous in that record that 13 and 12, five and nine is such a misleading. They played in that bloodbath UAA last year. And, uh, Chicago was a big, physical, talented team. They return a bunch of that. You mentioned it. they have a really good big guy freshman and a really good big guy guard. I don't know if you saw yesterday, but they they have a grad transfer coming in from what down or south. This Martinelli. Yeah, Martinelli. I mean that yeah, Martinelli. Kid, he's a stud. If that kid went to a Division three school out of high school, it would have been some of the biggest recruiting news in the country in Division three just in terms of like recruiting rankings and who was on them, right? Like, so that well, we, well, we tried to recruit him. We talked, we talked to Dom out of high school. He, he, uh, you know, he's, he's really, really good, tough, knows yeah. how to play. He had a couple 40 point games in high school. Uh, and now, you know, he's been playing and training at the division one level for four years. Um, he's a difference, big time difference maker, uh, for Chicago. And, uh, so yeah, he they they got a good one, and that's the thing is is um, you know we don't even know because rosters aren't out 
uh, who else might be joining some of these teams at this yeah. stage, but right. uh, they're going to, they're going to be tremendous. And certainly I think they're going to challenge for the UAA championship. Uh, agree. I mean, I, I think if, if you add him to the mix, uh, they should be with what they have coming back. They should be right in the championship conversation. Now that league's loaded and, you know, you've got you, NYU's got a bunch of transfers again, and Case has got transfers, including a kid from Wheaton, Chevello is going to Case. So UAA is great, Wash U, et cetera. But uh, Chicago, this is a this is a big time uh, non conference road game for your team on the beautiful south side of Chicago. But just amazing place. I'm not going to talk about the White Sox at all on this podcast today. That might be another podcast. <laughs> okay, Coach Rose. So they call this. Not it's not just me when I say that. Like it's legitimately this is the best non-conference rivalry in Division Three men's basketball right here. The Washu Bears. Um, talk a little bit about what has become just a fantastic small college D three non-conference matchup every year. Well, it started with Coach Bridges and Coach Edwards. Uh, you know when when Washu started their program back up. Um, and I, I don't know if there's been hardly a year that we haven't played each other. I, I remember playing when I was in the eighties playing Wash U and their great teams. Um, and it is, it is, you know, a couple of the premier small college basketball programs in the country. I think there's an immense amount of respect, uh, for the universities and the basketball programs. And, uh, you know, it, it goes, this kind of also is an indicator every year of where, where, where do you stand nationally? Uh, what is, what does it look like to play in an NCAA, uh, caliber game with that sort of intensity? If there's a, a game that really prepares us for the CCIW grind, it would be this one just because of the intensity and the pride, you know, we recruit a lot of their players. Yeah. Uh, they, they recruit a lot of our players. I, I think there's a lot of similarities between the, the two programs. And what's great is when you talk in Chicago and Wash U, one year we go uh, to Chicago, Wash U comes to us. The next year we flip-flop. We know we've got two uh, uh, great non-conference games. Uh, I talk to, to Mike and Pat every year, and we, we just figure it out. There's not a question, are we going to play? Should we play? You know, hey, you guys are going to be really good this year. I don't know if I want to play. There's none of that. We just, what date are we playing? And it's really nice to be able to ink in two really good games. And you mentioned just the kind of recruiting. There's a lot of a lot of kids that are recruited by both both schools. You know, the I'm looking at the visual on the screen there. I think number 11 is a guy that you may have talked to a couple times, right? And so there's a lot of joint, and then there's a lot of guys on that end up on our roster that they wanted. So it adds to the intrigue. These kids know each other. There's a strong Chicago mix on Wash U's roster every year. There's a strong Chicago mix on our roster every year. So it just, it sets up for a very cool uh, rivalry, doesn't uh, it? Go out Ryan Cohen right there. Number 11, we recruited Ryan Hart. And, and a lot of times it comes down to the, you know, the final two, or am I going to go to Wash U or am I going to go to Illinois Wesleyan? And, and Carlo and Ryan are, are great friends. We're bringing in one of Ryan's classmates in Josh high school, Fridman. Josh Fridman, were teammates. Um, you know, you've got, uh, Nathan Bolt and Will Grudzinski, uh, right. high school teammates. Right. And so there, there's just over the years that those things have happened over and over again. I, I will tell you one of the neat things, um, that, that Andrew Gilmore foundation that we went up to, it, it, there's wash you guys walking all around all there's Wesleyan players. I mean, these friendships are certainly there's a rivalry an intense rivalry yeah. and pride in this game. I mean, the alumni are talking about it. The alumni are, are behind the scenes. I, you know, uh, Sean Wallace comes up. I had an awesome conversation with former all American point guard at the Gilmore foundation. He's great friends with so many former Titans. So this is a intense rivalry, but it's also so well respected and the friendships will continue on for years and years after this. Another game that will be uh, enormous for both teams in uh, the NCA picture that the N NPI and all the re the results of this game will have huge implications during the, uh, the season um, non-conference game. Let's see. Whoops. I think I went the wrong way there. Okay. So we are, yeah, we're, we're at eight and nine and look at this coach Rose. 
<laughs> the, the, look at the the we're, the Titans in Texas. What a beautiful thing. Uh, we also have our friend Cliff Carroll. That that's about as polished and buttoned up as I, I, the the photo seems misleading. It, it would be better if his photos <laughs> if he was at a barbecue place and a little more casual. But what a big time uh, tournament for you on the road as you go to Mary Harden Baylor. You will face, and this comes right from coach cliff yesterday you weren't sure the matchups and stuff but uh he's pretty sure that you're facing him their his team mary harden baylor on the first day and then you get laterno uh another good team from the same conference you get them the next day how how did this uh appearance come about and talk a little bit about your your trip to texas oh yeah I, I, coach carroll again i mean i i guess you can just blanket this the, the people that the, the teams were playing, it, it's a group of great coaches and guys that, that I really respect and like. And, and Cliff and I have become good buddies since our last trip uh, to Texas. Where you got thrown and, out. <laughs> I did, wasn't going to bring that up, but <laughs> the only time in my, and, and I, and I will say that was sarcasm. Didn't, didn't bode well for me on, on that evening. Um <laughs> But Cliff is such a good guy and uh, fun to talk to, just a basketball guy. I really enjoy um, being around Cliff. And that that clearly, it's some there's some Photoshop because there has to be barbecue stain on that purple shirt somewhere that's cleaned up. Um, but and we're going to get some good barbecue. I, I'm hoping that we'll see you there. I mean, we're, we're, oh, we're going to fly into Dallas. It's a lock. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we, we heard it here first. So yeah, that, that's, this is again, you know, we've been talking. They they came up and uh, took it to us at the Sigma tournament last year. We had a great competitive game, uh, and part of it is you know that that's opened up some wonderful opportunities at Sigma tournament because you know Cliff says, hey, we'll come to Sigma if you come to our tournament the next year. Right. And absolutely, that he does such a good job. He plays a unique style. I don't know if you remember his defensive strategy. And, yeah. Uh, it is, it, it's a different way of playing, um, and uh, he does just does a really good job. And he's always got something up his sleeve. So I don't know what he's got going for that game, but you better be ready for just about everything. And you know that league, the ASC, and there's all kinds of kind of turmoil down here with uh, that conference and and where it's going, and a lot of coming and going. UT Dallas has gone Division Two. Some other teams have left the league, so it's really up in the air. What I will say is. What I've learned, I've lived down here 11 years now, very underrated conference. That That is, there is great basketball in the ASC. So you get Laterno as well. You probably don't know a ton about Laterno, but any team that goes 10 and 6 in that conference last year, um, very, very talented team. What do you know, Coach Rose, if anything, about your, your opponent in that second game? Well, I, you know, this, this when when you and I set this, uh, call up, you know, it sent, certainly sent me into immediate heartburn situation. Cause then I started to kind of looking at all the teams and, and uh, all of a sudden my, my stress level went up realizing what, what I'd done to myself again. And, and these guys are really good. I, I watched about 10 minutes. They play very fast, they averaged like 84 a game. Right. So it's going to be up and down. They, they lose a, a jet quick little point guard, unless he's coming back um that they had that averaged 22 a game so um they're gonna it, they, they they play a fast style of basketball they were athletic it's going to be down in texas so it's going to be a, another great test leading into right into cciw play less than a week after we play these two teams and, and if you know that coach carroll is right now looking at old box scores to figure out which officiating crew did the game <laughs> at concordia of Austin where they tossed <laughs> coach Rose, his only career, you know, this guy, how many seasons now are we heading into 18 or what are we heading into? We're heading into 19. I, I probably only had a handful of technicals 19 in my seasons. 19 years. I don't even remember the last one, but they got Texas. Texas is different down there now. Q. I, I might need to uh, talk to you about some, how, how I need to talk it maybe throw more y y'alls or something in there when I talked to the referees, but they didn't like me that weekend. No, no. And, and, and you know that, that 
Cliff is, is searching for that crew that when you show up, they will be the ones working that Mary Hart and Baylor game. You got to mentally prepare for that. There's going to be a lot going on down there. So these are, these are two fantastic games. I think you said you're, you're going to fly into Dallas. Are you, are, are you spending some time in like last time you practiced at SMU before you headed south? What do you, what do you have a general sense of what the plan is on that trip? Well, We're going to try to organize something similar to what we did last time. I think, you know, we, we go see, uh, the JFK Memorial, and we do some cool things in Dallas and spend a couple days there um, before we'll head down to, Perfect. but we don't, we don't have the exact details yet, but it's a, you know, those, those Christmas trips are such a unique experience and such uh, gives your team a chance to be together for five or six days on the road and playing competitive games and, and it is about the games, but it's more than just the games. It is right. the experience and the, the um, you know, just the, the chance for your team to really come together on the road uh, before you get into conference play or continue conference play. And la last trip, uh, excluding the the early exit, was a great experience. Yeah, and the uh, it's cool for me living in in the city limits of Dallas. Here, the Titans will be in Dallas for a couple of days, so I, I'm I'm officially committed to any and all Titan activities, including uh, heading south there to Belton. Um, it's going to be great. Um, and so, wow, what a what a non conference schedule. Those are the, the nine games. We'll pull that off. And you know, I, I didn't want to really spend a lot of time getting into the CCIW part of the schedule because, you know, we know there's 16 games and the order tends to kind of flow the same every year, but just a quick mention of, you know, that it's going to be a, a, a good league again this year. Last year was a strange year in the league, kind of a lot of turnover had some of the teams like, like a Wheaton, for example, Wheaton wasn't as strong as they usually are. Um, I know that all teams have added very, very impressive parts. Like I think Wheaton's had a really good recruiting year. Uh, I think Augustana has a really good transfer from Colorado. Uh, we know that Carthage returns a ton, um, including Ryan Johnson and several other guys that are really good, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you look at the league, Ron, and uh, I, I don't know what else to say other than it's going to be another 16 game grind for you in the, in the CCIW. Yeah, you know, how many years is this since you've been following CCIW basketball? Since 1989-90, so since 1989. Yeah. It's great every year. It, it, it You've got a, a group of schools and programs that take an immense amount of pride. I think we, we take pride in each other being part of the CCIW, one of the best small college basketball conferences in the country. Um, and next year – you know, last year was a uh, transitional year. There, there are still, there, there is a chance every single team is better than they were a year ago. Right. There's a chance. I mean, they, because of the, the pieces that are added or guys that become a year older, there's a lot of really good young returning players in the league. And so um, it's going to be really competitive again. It, it's, uh, it always is. We know each other so well. Uh, you know, we've got a, some some new coaches in the league, some fresh faces. Q, I'm the the one of the, yeah, the veterans you're the veteran. now. Wow! But um, we've got some really really talented coaches in the league that work hard at it, and it's going to be another terrific conference race. It's a great point about just you know players returning is a big thing. It's not just transfers, but it, just an example like Tyler Knuth at Augustana is coming back. He's a stud. Like him stud. coming. His, him coming back as a 22-year-old fifth-year guy, it, it, that's that's enormous for Augustana, who was right on the cusp last year, right, as we had two really tough games against them. So yep. you take a kid like him and you plop him in here as a fifth year, that is, that's a big deal. It's, a, it's a, a game changer. You know, someone that's been in your program already four years, played since he's been a freshman, um, that, that, that changes the complexion of everything or Augustana, but there's other people doing the same thing that have, right. have guys coming back. And then, and then guys that, that, uh, you know, this, again, the, the COVID thing is, has changed the landscape of college basketball. There are going to be guys in our league that wouldn't normally be in our league. And as a result, the teams are better. And so that's going to be the case again. And, and uh, um, so it, it's going to be a great race. I think everyone, uh, until the rosters come out, there's a lot of always uncertainty. Right. Um, you know, I, I think probably more than anybody, there's less 
uncertainty with our roster. You know, we, we yeah. haven't added a transfer. It's a, you know, you know who you're going to, you're going to play against. So I think ourselves, I'm not sure if Carthage got anybody or not, but it's going to be a great, great, uh, a great race. And, and, um, you know, hopefully the non-conference schedule that we just talked about will prepare us again for those challenges. Last question that I'll see if you have any final thoughts before we close up on this uh, roster or, or the non-conference schedule reveal of the, the QCAS, but you just mentioned, you know, you, you guys really haven't outside of getting your own guy back outside of Luke Yoder coming back after he went to division one for a year, you haven't had uh, guys coming in, you know, Illinois Wesleyan doesn't have grad programs. You don't have grad transfers and that kind of thing. You haven't had your own guys stay to play a fifth year because there aren't grad pro programs. So you've had a boatload of guys go on to do great things at the D2 level. You know, think about Cody Mitchell and Matt Laritz and Lucas Heflin and Ryan Soroka is now heading to division two. Do you Pete Lambesis? Like, yeah. Pete Lambesis, who was great at Trevecca Nazarene. Um, do you feel like because you didn't have those things that a lot of other programs did you feel like next year when when things get back to normal you know no more the COVID year because you've had to keep recruiting high school kids and you're sitting there right now with not only a talented group coming but you've got that group with Josh Fridman and Brady Keel and whoever else we want to list as like the, the up-and-comers you've had to keep recruiting and stocking your do you feel like you're you've been at a disadvantage the last few years. Do you feel like you're in an advantage when things get back to normal or is there anything to that? I, I do think from a cultural standpoint, we've been able to maintain the culture in our program where you come in, you work hard and you develop and you're part of a program. You're not. And I think, I, I hope this is true that, you know, um, guys, you're here four years you, you live in the freshman dorms, you, you develop those relationships over four years. There just has to be a different level of friendship and ownership that you can't necessarily get in one year. Um, and so, you know, our thing has been, you know, you're here four years, you get a great degree, and then, then you move on to your next stage of life, which we have fully supported those guys graduating four years and then finding a place to get their MBA since we don't offer one. And, right. and we, we've worked hard to try to help those guys find the right spot and couldn't be more proud of how well those guys have done and how they've represented the Titans during their year at the different spots. Uh, I will, <laughs> I'd be lying to say I'm not anxious for this whole COVID thing to, to be over because it, it has been a challenge playing older guys. Yeah. You know, you look at a roster and you think, it's look, going to look one thing, and then all of a sudden you're keeping competing against something different. So I am anxious for that to, to kind of be done after this year. But I'm also very proud of how our guys in our program have competed yeah. uh, without that um, significant advantage that our guys, you know, we don't talk about a lot. We just dig in and do our thing. And our guys have done a great job of doing that and look forward to doing it again next year. Yeah, really well said. I mean, it's uh, I'm glad that every kid that that uh, had that terrible COVID year got a real season back if they wanted it. I'm glad that that the COVID year has existed, but it's definitely created some challenges for the schools like yours that, that don't have grad programs and can't keep their own guys and can't bring in anybody. Um, it is what it is, but you guys have uh, you've won the, the league three of the last four years three of the last four years during this whole thing, which is pretty amazing. Um, Ron, I appreciate this. This is cool to be able to reveal the um, the schedule like this to people and, and kind of hear your take on how these games came about. Um, what would you leave the viewers with? Again, this is the finale of a season. You know, you think about finales. You think about like who shot JR. That's a finale. You have to we have to leave people with something that this is the finale coach Rose. I mean, what, what would you leave people with on the finale of the QCast season four? Well, first off, this QCast is awesome. You know, the, the, the D3, the, the exposure that, that our programs players uh, are getting now is, is unparalleled in, in, in my time. And, you know, I, I, and I want to apologize. You know, I, I know I, I saw that you put something out there that, I I had been on the your first QCast. podcast, first first pot. You know, I view this as something even bigger than that. I it's mean, this bigger is, than a this podcast. Is huge. 
This is this is bigger than a podcast. Um, hey, know this for the people that, that are tuning in. Uh, you've got uh, players all around the country, including Illinois Wesley. And they're working their tails off now to prepare for next season. And it's going to be a great Division Three season. It's going to be competitive. It's going to be exciting. Um, this is a fun time of year because you're really gearing up for the year, for the school year. Kids are coming back, so it's it's a fun time. Uh, I couldn't be more excited about the group coming back. We've got a a, a group of young men that are just just a, a blast to be around, and hard workers love basketball. And uh, if if we're closing this out, I think uh, super honored to be closing. I'm not sure it's Jr. level, uh, but I know my mom and dad enjoy watching it. So uh, I appreciate you having me on again, Q. It's always a pleasure, Ron, and uh, uh, just personally very excited about about the season. You know, there's certain seasons, you know, that are like, oh, okay, we got some new guys coming in. Maybe we'll be okay. This is one of those where, as a fan, I'm telling you, it, you're looking at the guys and you're thinking, you know, the the goals here in the sites should be as high as they can get. They should don't they, screw they, it up, Coach Rose. Yeah, is that I what mean, you tell me? don't screw it up. I didn't man. say that. I just said that we have good players, right? We have we have good guys. This is going to no be doubt. fun, um, Coach Rose. Thank you so much, folks. That was uh, episode fifty-seven, the season finale of season four. Uh, the off season may be a few days, maybe a, a few weeks, but it's quick. Uh, so thanks for joining me, everybody, and we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Q. Appreciate.